For the last several months, I've been using the Canon R6 Mark II and absolutely have loved it. And part of that workflow is not only photography for real estate, real estate, but also it is for the real estate video walkthroughs as well, which is super popular and honestly much needed in most, if not all real estate to show off that property. Well, this week, I had the privilege to be in a $1.6 million home and I got to show off what the Canon R6 Mark II can do when it comes to 60 frames per second, slowing it down to 24 frames per second, and it is gorgeous. Hi and welcome to Visible Tour. I'm Jared Hoyman and I'm just very excited to talk about the Canon R6 Mark II and the capabilities it has when it comes to doing video. In this case, it is 60 frames per second video walkthrough of this $1.6 million home and it was fun. It is great. You shoot in C-Log 3 and you just make the magic happen. So in this video, I'm going to show you kind of my process of thinking when it comes to doing these video walkthroughs of properties. Before we watch this video, these are the things I want you to think about, look for. I use the Canon R6 Mark II. I use the Canon 15 to 35 RF. It's a 2.8, but had it set at F4. I also had image stabilization on. That's a tough one. I don't recommend image stabilization on all the time. And I'm not sure if it should ever be on. The image stabilization when it comes to the video really does mess up the images when it does mess it up. When it doesn't, it does amazing jobs. But when it does, it's really hard to correct, especially in DaVinci Resolve, which has really good image stabilization features in that software. You're gonna see this filmed at 15 millimeter. I rarely, if never, ever go in beyond 15 millimeter. Sometimes if I wanna focus on an object or an area, I might go into about 20 or 24 millimeter, or if I'm outside, I will zoom in. For everything inside is the Canon R6 Mark II, and the gimbal I'm using is the Zoom Crane II. It's an excellent crane, I've had it for a couple of years. It works well, it does its purpose. For the outside shots, I'm using the Mavic 3, and I'm using it at 24 frames per second, and the 5.7K resolution. I believe it's 5.7K, if I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll tell me. 24 frames per second. I don't shoot 60 or 120 when it comes to the Mavic 3 because, well, it's so steady and sturdy with the motion that I never have to slow it down. When it comes to the R6 Mark II and you're shooting inside or even outside with that, you have to do the 60 frames per second just so you can slow it down 40% and get those smoother shots. The Mavic 3 was shot in D-Log and C-Log 3 for the Canon. There are some situations where you do not need to shoot in C-Log or D-Log, but in these situations you do. There's just too many variables when it comes to light and changing of scenery that you really need that flexibility of what Log does. And so I highly recommend when you're shooting professionally in an unpredictable scenario like this, then log is the way to go. So we've got the Mavic 3, we've got the Canon, we got the gimbal, we do C-Log, we do D-Log, we've got all of that. But you know what really ties the whole thing together? Music. And that is the key, to find the mood, to find that feeling, to really bring it up because these could be awesome shots, but without that mood, well, that just doesn't do it. So let's get into the video. Right afterwards, we're gonna come back in here and I'm gonna give you the process that I take when it comes to video walkthroughs and explain my choices.
what did you think of the video? Don't be too critical, please don't. Everybody's got their opinion, but let me know truly in the comments below what you thought of the video. Is that something that kind of brings an emotion out to you? I do use Epidemic when it comes to my sound choices. So this one I have not heard before. I've used a lot of songs over and over because there's ones that I like. In Epidemic, you can create libraries, you can create favorites and categorize them. If you haven't used Epidemic Sound before, there's a link below to try it out. They aren't sponsoring this video at all. I've just been using them for the last five years and I absolutely love it. Actually, six years. It's been six years now that I've been using Epidemic Sound and it just makes everything so much easier when it comes to these video walkthroughs and honestly on YouTube as well. And they're pretty reasonable in price. Now, if you go back and watch this video again, pay attention to the beats of the sound and where I made my choices of cutting it. Best advice I ever received was somebody who criticized me on Facebook about six years ago on my video walkthroughs. And that was probably the best criticism I ever received. At first, I didn't like it because nobody likes to be criticized, but I realized that that person was correct. I was picking awesome music and I was not matching it up with the mood and I wasn't matching it up with beats at all. Now, I like music, I can keep a beat. And so when I started hitting beats specifically and making specific choices in my cuts, the music started to really make the footage come alive. And that's when my game really started to change. And that's what I would recommend for you. If you're coming into doing video walkthroughs or any kind of um, video that includes music, you want to be purposeful when it comes to those changes with beats. What I've learned over the last several years is you don't want to be on a same beat over and over. It's good to keep a beat and then sometimes mix it up because everybody expects that beat and then they kind of get into that rhythm and that groove and then they get bored, but then you mix it up a little bit and it keeps them awake. Also with video walkthroughs, you want to keep it less than two minutes. Ideally, if you can keep it around one minute, that would be great. Now I wanted to talk about what I'm using to grade. And a lot of you who have been following me for the last at least four months have realized that I left Adobe Premiere Pro and I went to DaVinci Resolve and I haven't looked back. I love DaVinci Resolve. Grading log footage has been so much easier than when I was grading it with uh, Premiere Pro. If you're brand new and you're not married to an editing service, well then I would go to DaVinci Resolve. First of all, there's a free version, you can try it out. And if you like it, purchase the one-time payment for $300 and you're golden. Grading will be easier, it'll be faster, the cutting is great, the audio editing is awesome. I just can't say enough. If you like this kind of video format when I bring you into one of my video walkthroughs, well, like this video because it'll let me know that this is kind of the content that you want and it lets me know that I should do more of this. If you're brand new here and you like what you just saw, then well, I would consider subscribing because this is kind of the content I like to talk about. I love cameras, I love video, I love marketing, and that's really the focus of this channel. And just like any other channel out there on YouTube, well, it's subject to change and morph and grow, and it really is based on you because you guys dictate what you want me to talk about. And I'm willing to do that. I love lens reviews, I love camera reviews, I love talking about the process. Oh my gosh, I can nerd out with you guys all day long. Now this video just wrapped up, but these videos are ready for prime picking and you know they're good because the algorithm that Google has created knows you, knows you better than you. And so these are the videos to watch. Totally recommend them. I have no idea what they are, but there's something I did. Must be good. Hopefully. Good luck.